start the recording. Welcome everyone to today's lesson. Now we are going to review what was a loss for us. A loss in a long game. Let's actually open up. Oh, let's make sure you guys can see it too. <laughs> that might be might be helpful. Um, we're going to look at what it was a loss for us in a long game. We had a Sona game and we wound up uh, even dropping our Sightstone towards the end to grab, which we grabbed this, a Banshee's Veil, um, to try and make sure that if we uh, got fizzled, got charmed, uh, Leona tried to engage on everybody, but we could drop some of that and not get too, like, CC'd. Uh, because we are pretty squishy, and we opted for the uh, Banner of Command because uh, we just wanted to make sure that we could get control of the side lanes a little bit. Uh, but without that, any further ado, I think there were some opportunities for us to have played that better. Um, there were some pretty good plays that we had. We, I think, I think we missed a flash crescendo at some point, um, and stuff like that's obvious. But there were definitely some opportunities elsewhere that I think we could have made up, especially in lane, because it's been a while since I've played Sona in lane, um, pretty consistently at least. I, I always dabble with her, but. Um, I, I want to I want to review the lane, see if there were opportunities there that I can uh, make the most out of in the future, and also in the late game, sort of see how my rotations around the map were working out because we were we were losing pressure everywhere. And as a support, I'm somebody who gets to like roam elsewhere on the map. Pretty much, me and the jungler are the only ones that have a lot of liberty to do that. Um, mid can get some roam plays off, but it's for consistent control of the map. That's more of a uh, jungler and mid thing. So, see if we can get our drawing tool up here. We should be loading into the game. Looks like we're having a little bit of a little bit of issues. There we go. Now we're booting on in. All right, wonderful, wonderful. Let's actually. Need to get one more thing here. Hold on. Let's get uh, this active. Nice. So now we can go like that. We should be able to go. Oh, first we gotta activate. Derp. All right, there we go. Perfect. Let's get you over here. Let's get you. Ah, oh, come on. There we are. All right, cool. Very well. All right, so, uh, right off the bat, actually, so we were typing in chat, this is just bad. Also, I can't click in game, oh no, all right, there we go. Um, so this is just bad, I was typing in chat, and like, I shouldn't do that, like, people were talking about the stream or something, so I was chatting it up with people. Um, luckily, we were able to flash and make it out with our lives. I guess I won't really overanalyze that too much, just because it was the it was the typing in chat. I know what the problem was for sure there. It did cost us our flash. We wind up getting a first blood out of it. Uh, that's good to charge up my passive while on base. All right, that's actually bad for us because that's their Lucian. Never mind. <laughs> so it was a bit of a rough start for us. Uh, good on not waiting for Yi there, so we can get this started and prevent his jungle clear from being too far behind. Still got a really sick leash, and I even leashed him a little bit on the gromp there. Go and slow this down a little bit. Uh, maybe not. Maybe we'll put it back on too. Um, okay, so right off the bat, actually, we had a pretty good fight. Oh man, what is happening? Goodness. This replay client is not having it today. Um, okay, so as soon as he went in for that, I said, I don't see Leona yet. So I'm going to go forward. I'm going to make sure that he's in range of my Q. So he gets the buff instantly. And we got a pretty good trade from that. I don't think I could auto very much, but now that we see Leona, we're going to play a little bit further back, a little bit more respectful. Just go forward, try and get our poke. That's pretty good. I am looking for opportunities to go in and poke. I'm not sure if I should just poke Leona down because she keeps zoning me like this. And what I want to do is I want to go, ah, if I can not move the screen while I do this, I want to go more this way 
So I can hit both Lucian and Leona, ideally from standing like right here, or maybe even a little bit back, like right there with my Q. But every time I move forward uh, a little bit out this way to try and get in range of Lucian, Leona starts to go forward like she's going to go in on me. Which right now it's just level 1, she doesn't have Zenith Blade to go in on me. But she can just walk up and Q me, and that's pretty bad. <laughs> um, so we don't want that to happen. But maybe I should just be taking cues on Leona, like this. I wind up doing that anyway. Perhaps if I just did that a little bit more readily and didn't worry as much about trying to like optimize and hit both, it could be better. Now here I took a lot of damage, um, and I didn't exhaust Lucian throughout, so that's probably a mistake. That probably could have been an all-in situation. Uh, I was playing a little bit more defensive because... Oh, this was nice. Here, let's actually jump back. Let's analyze that whole thing, right? So that was a bit messy. Because I didn't have Flash coming into this, remember. And Leona took Teleport, so she's down a Summoner spell. Um, which I actually didn't realize until later in the game, but I should have I should have just been more aware and less streaming. <laughs> um, okay, so we look for the fight here, and I actually take a lot of damage. This is pretty lucky for us um, that I didn't die here. Look for the free poke on the way back. They're level 2. So we want to stay back, so we're not level 2 just yet. Lucian is able to get us, basically there, should have got us there. But I want to make sure and get my last bit of poke down, because he was already channeling Q on us. So that at least Kog'Maw could get a trade. Kog'Maw scales harder than Lucian, so that was the thinking there at least. If I'm going to die from that Q, I might as well Q him back and make sure Kog'Maw gets the power. And then finally we hit level 2, so then we can have control of the lane again. And start healing on up. Healing up on up. <laughs> so that's good. Don't really find an opportunity to go on Leona. We're just having no trouble last hitting there. So I actually look for a roam to give Kogma a little bit of a level advantage early on. I, in retrospect, I think this is wrong. I think I should be hugging the lane a little bit more. Maybe this. Maybe this is fine. I should know that this is a dangerous path to go. This is just a mistake going this way. I should go back through the lane this way. Um, that's just a mistake. Poor map awareness. What I actually do is I think, okay, Leona's back after all that. And Lucian's solo. So I'm going to ward here for the jungler. But then immediately I just get all in with Zenith Blade. And I didn't have proper ward coverage, so I just... Poor play on my part. It happens. That definitely could have been better, so... And we didn't drill today either. So my map awareness isn't what it normally is. What do we get for items? We were able to upgrade Frost Fang at least. So we didn't drill, so maybe my map awareness, since I didn't hear that ping, tell me uh, to look at the mini-map. Maybe it's a little less than normal. Look for a little pre free poke as soon as I get back. Leona goes pretty hard, but she goes far enough to where Lucian wasn't able to get a lot of damage traded down while I was stunned. So we are able to just disengage out pretty easily. And then Lucian overcommits, in my opinion, a little bit there to try and get damage to finish off and get his cooldowns up. But since we just stayed back, we were able to win that trade, and now I can also sustain us with our heal. So that's pretty good. Being able to out-sustain lanes like that, I think, is one of Sona's strengths. I certainly don't have a lot of utility, so i got to be careful about when to fight. And I also think that's why this is bad. Because if I don't have a lot of utility as a support, I shouldn't be as active on the map roaming around. Because all I have is damage and healing. So if, like, Master Yi needs some help clearing the jungle, I could go for that. And I go for this. Because I know Master Yi is right here to back me up. So we should be able to make this work. As soon as Lucian gets there, coming from lane, it might be the right time to back out. We're going pretty hard, I think. Uh, Master, you tried to flash to get more auto attacks onto uh, Vi there, which is unfortunate he couldn't make it happen, but I think we disengaged at about the right time there. It's just unfortunately, like, we had a split call, so that was bad. Seeing Zenith play down, I think, okay, this is a fight that we can actually take, especially since we have the call for help. So, Zenith Blade's down. These are the only minions involved. And I'm already in proper zone to hit Kogma with whatever I need. So I'm thinking, alright, let's definitely not just walk into them. 
But let's take this fight. Let's stay here, let's chill. I actually don't give Cogman my shield there, which is, uh, I think, incorrect. And I got stunned by Leona. And at the end of the day, we are down one level in this engagement. It's only on me, but we are down a level, so we do need to be careful. I was trying to make it out there without using either summoner, um, which is a little greedy, and at the end of the day, Kogma agrees and winds up uh, using his heal to secure that, which is unfortunate. So we're getting some poke down when we can. I think we're mostly just trying to play defensively because, like, Lucian has gotten super fed not just off us, but he's also gotten the kills on Master Yi. Uh, us as in me and Kogma. Um, so he's quite a threat. Now this was being pinged out from our, our perspective. Uh, I was being pinged by Malzahar. So I had a feeling she was there. We're going to go back to the Fog of War here. So I'm, I'm not too surprised. And I was a little ready to try and dodge and throw up the shields. Couldn't quite make it work. I was hoping maybe that, like, in this fight, we could really get some good kills afterwards. And we do get two kills onto Malzahar and one kill onto Kogma. So at the end of the day, that's a three for two. It is worth it for us. And because the, they didn't really have a way to, like, burst down that turret, because it was so high in HP... You know, unless the jungler happened to be there too, that could have made it bad for us, but we only had the pings coming from mid to signify the uh, mid laner coming. So I, I took a bit of a chance there and it turned out to work out for us. We see Vi coming mid, so I start to move this way. Unfortunately, I get caught by Leona. Good dodge on the Q there, but Vi holds me, so I have no hope. <laughs> um. This is just unfortunate. We tried to get an all-in on Dilution before they got there. Just couldn't make it work. This was probably, again, poor play. Because I'm thinking, now that I'm seeing this in action, trying to roam like this is not helpful as a support with no utility. And especially no tankiness. Like, sure, I have my shield for my W, so I'm pseudo-tanky, but I'm really not. I'm very, I'm very squishy. Um, so, I know this is warded. I saw how they moved. That was pretty good. Good spot on the ward there. Um, not able to get back to lane to defend it, but we pretty much lost control of that lane anyway. So getting Kogma a lane that he can control and let push in more, just like this, is pretty helpful in this situation, I think. Because Kogma just wants to get to late game. And I'm just trying to grab my 6 off this and then call it good. But yeah, I, I think... I think my job is like a damage heal support, mage air quotes, uh, one of the more traditional mage supports, is to just be there to amp engagements, just like this one. Here everybody's doing additional damage because of me, everyone's uh, additionally tanky because of me, and I give little move speed for whoever's uh, tanking the turret to get right out. Unfortunately, Malzahar didn't know it was on him, so he got executed, but he didn't give over the kill, so that's not too bad. Miles probably wanted to go back after that anyway, because he had cooldowns up. But yeah, so like, that's good. If there's a fight that's breaking out, I think it's important for me to be there. But I don't think it's important for me to try and establish control anywhere, because I don't really have any sort of utility tools to force control onto our side. So I think I'm going to be, if I play Sona in the future, I'm going to be a lot less active on trying to roam through the jungle. And more just like clumping with my team as much as possible to make the most out of my auras. So we're hanging out with the team. Whoa, whoa, whoa. that was too fast. I thought we were at a dead spot and I was wrong! <laughs> okay. So we're hanging out with our team. I think, okay, we're gonna disengage so I throw up the shields just to run. As soon as this stuff happens, though, it's like, okay, well, the fight's on. So, we Q not just to... Originally, it was to just get some poke down. But now it's like, okay, this damage order is here. I gotta hang out and try and keep caught up alive. I'm a little slow on the ult there. I do catch Ari with it. But maybe if I had ulted a little bit sooner, could have made that work. Try and give my move speed to everybody as much as possible here. 
and Fizz winds up finishing us off. Uh, it is Tank Fizz, by the way, too. Um, so, perhaps the proper play was as soon as Cog was down, just leaving, because that's a lot of our damage. Like, it is possible with Malzahar to make it work, but our Yi's not doing very well, our Nar isn't doing very well, and I should be more aware of that and know when we have a fight we can pick and when we can't. Because, again, as a support, I'm not bringing the additional utility of giving us control uh, in the jungle and over the river. What I'm doing is I'm giving us control over the fights. So I need to know what fights we can take. And any fight where it's like these, we're trying to equalize these, it's not going to be in our favor. We have to have a numbers advantage on us for those kinds of fights. So unfortunately, I got some good value out of Rift Herald there. A little careful of Leona. She does reward it, so not that much gained there. I actually try and throw it on the ward here, and she was able to clean it out with the same uh, sweeper lens that she had up. So that's just a missed time on me. A little sloppy play there. Poor timing. Go ahead and throw it on my last ward and look to go back, but since they're pushing in, since it's just Lucian, since I didn't see Leona come here as well, I'm thinking, okay, if he pushes forward with this wave, I have flash available and I can flash ult him. And he, that's a dead Lucian if he came. Fortunately for us, he doesn't come. And what's debatable is staying in this brush for so long. I think I probably should have completed my recall the first time, so then I could start joining my team again. I'm not here for, like, utility of if there was a 2v1 to make sure that we could do proper damage. And I remember this is warded, so now that my sweeper is up, I do knock it down. Um, what I'm here for is the fight. So this fight has already been lost, right? This is when Malzahar died. That's when I should have been here. So sure, we get a nice ult for some good turret damage. Fight breaks out. Uh, we pretty much just run into our things, because our... Ult's already down, Flash is down, so it's just kiting out Lucian, which we actually are able to do, so great. Worked out okay. It wasn't that bad for us. I don't think the, there's too much nuance to Sona once her ult's down. Just sort of use your abilities as you see they're needed. So seeing this, I'm realizing for the first time, I think at this point, that Leona took TP. <laughs> Um, so I'm thinking, okay, Fizz is behind us, but it is Tank Fizz who uh, hasn't quite gone into what the damage he could. Since he is so fed, we got to be definitely careful, but we can probably burst her out first and then turn on to Fizz. Exhaust comes out from Malzahar. I did have my exhaust ready as well if Fizz went in, but Fizz decides to back off seeing he already drew one exhaust. So we get a kill on Leona there. Playing some notes for them. Little music. I'm throwing out my E fairly often for positioning because I didn't have too many mana problems this game. I don't think I built that much mana. Like, I built this for regen. I built this for regen. But I didn't... I mean, I have uh, cooldown boots, so we, we definitely have enough CDR to run low, but we just aren't. So I think... Using that E a little bit more liberally is good. This is just poor map awareness. What I'm doing is I'm tunneling on, like, uh, I think it's like Fizz was right there, right? Who was right here? Yeah, Fizz. And I just didn't see that I walked right past Lucian. My camera was, like, over here, and it's just been all of a sudden Lucian. So I let Lucian just try to try and get back out. But again, that's map awareness. We're having a lot of problems with our map awareness and sort of understanding our place on map awareness in that like I'm not in charge of controlling these zones on the map I'm here to make the team fights go in our way as Sona at least as most supports I'm about controlling space on the map but not as Sona I don't think so Smells does have to flash there but we do wind up getting the suppression down on Leona. Not the best target. I actually 
I have my ult on cooldown, so I'm not able to follow up CC with anybody. But they burst me out first. But sure, I'm squishy. It's not a bad target. But at the end of the day, we got four for one off that. And, like, I'm the only one that died. So that's pretty good. Um, I think being clumped like that is a little risky. But it's good for me because all of my auras get on people when I clump. So I think it's probably right as Sona to go for the clump. Fortunately, couldn't quite get there in time. A little bit of a hesitation on my part in mid. Back off because I don't want to go for any deep rewards not knowing where she, are, where she is. She shows top so I'm thinking, okay, well I do have Crescendo available. Sweeping out any wards, looking for an opportunity to uh, get somebody with Crescendo. Nobody's around though. So we just head on out. Throw a ward on the Baron, now that we have an escort with our tank. They're, and they just took the dragon, so we know they're all around there somewhere. So we throw out the E to disengage. It's nice. A little helpful there. I'm trying to fish for an opportunity to, I think, flash Crescendo there. Just couldn't quite find it. And they're going uh, on to Yi there. Thinking, okay, if we kill Master Yi, we can get the Baron. Right thought. Just not working out for them. Again, I get the Crescendo. Or I get the E on all my allies so they can for sure be following up. And since they're all lined up on this, I go for the flash Crescendo play. And I only am able to land it on two, because the distance is fairly short and Vi was already farther ahead. But that's uh, Leona, which isn't the best target, but also Fizz, who, sure, he's going Tank Fizz, but he's going, like, a bit more damagey, so he's not, like, tanky in the sense that he has a lot of HP yet. He's just got some sustain. And if we can burst him out quickly, we can make that work. And then I throw, again, all my auras down onto everybody, trying to keep people alive. Malzar suppresses the Fizz to make sure he can't get much of his abilities off. And again, we're clumping here, but as Sona, I love teams that clump. So that's another thing I'm, I'm really starting to feel here in the replay that I didn't feel as much in-game. I love when our team clumps together. If we have a team composition where people group really hard and stay, like, clumped on top of one another, uh, it's definitely... Is there somebody who's going to try and steal this? I have a feeling like somebody tried to steal this here, so we'll slow down. Oh yeah, she already did. Okay, great. Um, <laughs> tried to contest it and just didn't work out for her. Great. Anyways, I definitely like team compositions that clump the Sona, so I need to be a little bit more aware of that going forward and be ready to pick Sona into compositions that like to group together and have lots of uh, uh, skirmishes all the time. That's my bread and butter. Ah, come on. Hey, come on. Controls, please. So this is wrong. I don't know what's happening here, why I just went mid. I was trying to... Oh, I know why. It's because we have Baron, right? So a nice little moonwalk there. So I just started going mid because I have Baron. And I want to immediately give my aura somewhere it's not. But he's already dead by the time like I would be anywhere significant on the map. I'd be like here. So I think... Going into this at this point is probably wrong. If I had known they were going to come kill Yi, it was the right choice, but I didn't. Um, so Cogman's just got to be able to disengage on his own. Which he's not able to do because they have too much catch. So we did get Baron there, but then we instantly lost it off of two people. So that's pretty unfortunate. Um, so I just opt to stay mid and use what effect of the Baron I can to just establish control over the mid wave. I throw down my spooky ghost to see where they're at, and once I see that they're so far back, I think, okay, well, I just need to shove out mid as best I can here. So that's what I do. Speed this up a little bit. So shoving mid isn't the most entertaining thing or nuanced thing to analyze. Um, I go over here, try and help defend this. Throw down some poke. Don't really want to get too close, though, because Leona can go really hard on you. So we do wind up losing that, which is unfortunate. With Baron, you would think we wouldn't be the ones losing turrets, but again, when we lost uh, two wearers right off the bat, it makes it a lot harder. And we aren't grouping on a single lane as well. We had Nar split pushing with TP, and he split pushed it all the way to turret, and then just wasn't able to get anything done, specifically because we weren't grouping 
to push in an opposite side lane like bottom. Could possibly push mid as well, but we should be grouping bottom and shoving this out. Because then they're going to have to make a decision. Okay, do we send Fizz top to deal with him? And if so, like Nora can disengage, TP in, and then we can fight over here. We didn't group. Even if we lost two people wearing it, it doesn't matter. We only need one person wearing it in the area. So I should have been making shot calls as a support uh, to group and use that Baron more effectively. Instead of just being like, oh, okay, well, I guess I'll go mid and try and use it myself, blah, blah, blah. I didn't anticipate she was still... I did... Let me be clear. Anticipate she was still in the brush there. Um, I was just hoping that I, I would have follow-up here. I didn't know that Vi and you were dueling, so that's my bad on map awareness. Um, but luckily, Melzar is able to uh, make it work. I did. That's the crescendo I missed earlier, so that's unfortunate. Again, a little bit of problems with map awareness. I, I was thinking Yi could rotate there, but that's my bad on just not knowing he was dueling Vi. I should have... Seeing that, and knocked walked into there intentionally trying to bait a fight out because uh, I just baited myself to death. <laughs> then we even lose the inhibitor here as well, which is also bad because we have Baron. Just it stings, you know. So mostly that was a denied Baron that kept us in the game, right? It's like, all right, well, let me go out trying to clear out some vision, trying to establish a little bit of vision around the Drake. Um, I can't tell you what Drake it's going to be. Actually, yes, I can. It's going to be an ocean, so it's not important. And here's here I was shot calling in the chat. I was saying, like, okay, it's ocean Drake. Don't get the Drake. Don't prioritize that. Prioritize on winning the team fight. And everybody seemed in largely agreement with that. It wasn't any major disruptions. Malzahar went mid to try and control uh, the minion wave that is pushing with supers. I got the spell shield off of Ari with the Q there. Somebody else on their team aggroed it. But then they opt to be on it. So we have to be in a little bit of a defensive position. And that is because Malzahar isn't there with us, right? So again, map awareness. This is too hard. This is too hard. Sure, this is going to be... Well, actually, just go forward just a little bit. Oh, shit. That was too much. <laughs> We'll go to where it lands so we can see who it hit. But this is too hard. Spooky Ghost give me vision. Okay, there we go. So sure I hit three. And these are, like, the two squishies we want. But Yi wasn't there. Kong was in a decent position. Nar, if he had his rage bar filled more, could have been alright to just jump in bounce off my head and be on top of people and instantly go mega. But he wasn't in position to follow up. This is me going, like, too aggressive. Not not too aggressive, but I, I think it falls back to map awareness again. Because Malzahar isn't there, my team wasn't in position to follow up, and I just go hard because I see an opportunity. And that's wrong. Just because I see a three-man crescendo doesn't mean I should take it. So, that's an unfortunate start to the fight, because that crescendo essentially does nothing, and it means they get to fight which is uh, at the start here, 3v5, I think. I don't see. I actually don't know where Master Yi is. He might just be on top of us here. Yeah, he is here. 4v5. So, of course, I just get deleted right off the bat. It winds up being a 3 for 1. Sure, they lose their jungler, but like that doesn't really matter too much. Uh, they actually are able to pick up Ari on the back here. I think the charm was still lasting from Cogs while he went in there. So that's unfortunate. It winds up being a Drake for two and four. And at this point, okay, maybe that's not the worst trade for us, but certainly could have been much better if I had just not been as trigger happy with that crescendo. So a little unfortunate. They go to push in that top. I go bottom. Because I look and say, okay, there's more teammates here. Than there are here and fizz is a much harder target to track down especially when he's uh, actually getting some tankiness behind him um this is a really strange like tank build on fizz he's getting like tanky off tank things but they're not really mixing ap into it very interesting build i mean it works so not criticizing but just interesting um so i go to the team that i part of the team that i think has more kill potential onto illusion and also, like, Master Yi just has a pretty good chase. 
So as soon as Leland gets that uh, ult onto us, I think it's we should recognize... Like, this is chasing, is what we're doing. We're not helping this way clear. We were chasing a little bit there. That was a little bit too slow. Like, he was gone. We need to be in base. Because of all this. So, again, map warning is a little poor there. Definitely knowing, like, what Sona does in fights a little bit better and keeping that more in mind is helpful. We did manage to save that turret by a thread, so that was helpful. Um, but I think our map awareness is really what costs us this game. So far, at least. We'll see how these last few things go. So our position over here, like, that was hanging by a thread, so that was probably down no matter what. It's this that we might be able to defend. But at the same time, now that this is a vulnerable inhibitor, maybe we can defend that. So the question is, like, okay, where do I go here? Fizz probably can't take inhibitors very quickly, so maybe I need to rotate bottom. And that's what I opt to do. I throw out the spooky ghost this way to help them, because my presence here is going to be three people. So hopefully the spooky ghost will kind of equalize the situation over here. As soon as I see that they're disengaged, which is, they're playing this right, as soon as, like, we rotate over, this is just, I mean, this is an expert play by them. I really am impressed that they did this. As soon as we try and engage this way, they disengage to try and bait a chase, and then they let the rest of their team go super hard on the people top, which is great because these are both squishy targets, you know? So sure, it may have been arguably right to rotate this way to try and defend that, um... But, I'm not with my squishies, and now I can't really defend them. And sure, I get a good crescendo again at the end there, and we're able to finish that off. But it's just, it's one of those, like, it feels like an impossible decision. Do I defend the base, or do I, like, defend Elder, you know? We're all able to keep ourselves alive here. Keep this turret alive, rather. And so I'm thinking out uh, the Baron. I'm like, okay, they've got to be on it if everything's just respawned. I'm trying to grab what items I can. Um, I'm not sure what actually I was waiting on here. Let's actually see what we bought. Okay, yeah, just upgraded a little bit. That's not that significant of an upgrade, but it gives us a little bit extra survivability. It's all right. So I'm thinking, okay, they've got to be on here. There's no way with two up inhibitors they wouldn't be trying to just barrel down for that right now. Let me pop this, or, no, 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 I have wards available, so I think, let me just drop a ward on it, oh shit, they're on it, alright, okay, they deny the ward, or they started to deny the ward, so I go here to pop this to make sure I have true vision, and seeing Vice smite like that, immediately I flash, and I think I actually got it with the crescendo. So that felt pretty nice, and like I have no fucking way out. But, now we have Baron on 4 again. So that's alright, I usually don't go for hero plays, but when we're this far behind, I think that's when it's acceptable to try and be a hero. Because if I didn't, like, and they got Baron anyway, I think we lose the game there no matter what. So, as much as I say don't be a hero, that's usually when I feel like the game is totally still winnable. This one I felt was starting to be out of our control. And once again, maybe we're not going to make the most out of using this Baron. Oh shoot, missed my pause button there. Um, but we we are able to uh, deny them having Baron, and that's the most important thing there. So right here, like this is a gone inhibitor. I think we should just give this up. Like maybe look for some of this poke on the way out. But we should be waiting for the next minion spawn to Baron up those minions. I think this is going a little bit too hard. Lucian finds an opportunity to go in, but he QSSs the ult. That's just unfortunate. Good item build by him. And see, that's what I'm talking about. So the fight is like in full swing at this point. And now we have Baron up minions that could start assisting us in a call for help. But by that point, we just lost Master Yi. Cogma goes down as well there. And we haven't gotten any of them yet. And now we're fighting in call for help minions and we're baiting them to go under Nexus turrets. So this part is really good. I'm really happy that the fight continued there. But now we lost... I think Malzahar's still wearing Baron, is that right? Yeah, he's still wearing Baron. 
Well, that's it. And go on Malzahar for not giving up there. Because we actually did drag this fight out for quite... Or drag this game out for quite a long time. We were able to defend this. I think... Yeah, we did defend that from going down. Couldn't quite defend this inhibitor. I go for a crescendo just because, like, at this point, like, our people are going to respawn and be able to defend the Nexus. So if we can get a kill on their way out, that's great. We actually are able to finish it off. And then Malzar suppresses the right target there after the Q is down so she can't interrupt him. Beautiful play by the Malzar. And Malzahar is the one with the Baron. So again, what I need to be doing at this point is saying, okay, Malzahar has got Baron. Let's pick a lane to press out. And let's use that Baron effectively. Or let's just turtle and try and as effectively as possible um, get ourselves uh, control of the base waves again. So we picked up Blue Pot because we're full build at this point. Great. Or right, there we go. Wrong buttons. Checking here to see if anybody's uh, around. Throw out the spooky ghost. Fizz tanks and wolf. And I do have to uh, kind of burn everything on Fizz here. But it draws attention away from the Drake or the dragon because it's elder at this point, which is incredible. Beautiful sneak by Master Yi there. And he's actually able to pick up a kill on Dilution on the way out. So I'm looking to try and give some support, or at least throw down some wards. Can't quite make it work, um, but then we do get a catch on the Vi a little bit, which is great. We get a pick off. Fighting now with Elder, fabulous. So I'm just looking to, again, this is good clumping for us uh, as Leona, or excuse me, as Sona, because we're getting all of our ores down. A little bit of indecision, we're backing up because we have to defend the base. Bernard is left alone, so we got to kind of come back and escort him out of the team. Out of the enemies. Again, a little indecision on if we're going in or not. Once Leona goes like really hard and is separated from her team. Okay, let's pin her there and try and finish her off. We actually are able to get the last bit of her. Wonderful. But now we gotta defend the space. Because we're down. We don't even have Nexus turrets anymore. Great. Malz gets a double kill. Wonderful. This is the power of that Elder. Um, so, just fabulous on Master Yi for sneaking that. What a great... That's great game sense and map awareness, right? The thing that like we're sort of emphasizing so far for us. Um, the game sense of like what our role is in teamfights, how we can be most effectively useful for the team, and like just map awareness we kind of struggled with. right here looking to get the red over to cog which we are able to do wonderful i'm mostly looking to back up nar when he's poking forward like that until now we see the enemy team it's like okay well now it's time to look for opportunities throw on spooky guys to get vision and allow us to disengage safely and kind of be on a flank to threaten because they want our inhibitor that just respawned right couldn't find anything to make it work, so I just repositioned so we can defend both of these inhibitors. Positioning everyone right here is really good because we can rotate either way. Since this lane is so far pushed forward, and it's actually shoving on its own really hard right now, this should be pretty well defended just from the minion waves that are coming. This is the one we have to worry about defending. So while it's good to position here, just to make sure nobody comes in and tries to like solo it, like Lucian, who does have a lot of damage at this point. Um, yeah, I think that's what I was looking for. We actually threw down the banner of command just to make sure we had plenty of control. But I was wrong, I think. Because since the wave is so pushed out, this is coming back to the map awareness problem, right? And this is actually a bannered up minion from the last time. So I'd already used it there, and this was effectively creating enough pressure to where we don't have to worry about the bot side. So what I should have done is use a second banner of command either on this guy before he got this low, or saved it and used it on the next mid wave, or dropped it top next time I had an opportunity to, either grabbing it on spawn or making a quick detour when it looks like we're not about to get engaged on and dropping it up there to sort of mitigate the pressure that's coming in from the top super minions. 
Unfortunately, I sort of wasted the banner of command there by just like, but continue to push super hard. Like that's, I think that's incorrect use of banner, and that gives them good control of the pressure here. So maybe this fight wouldn't have happened. Maybe it would have happened more favorably with the setup. We did get a pretty nice start because they put all their damage on Nar, who goes mega, and we do whiff the crescendo there. Luckily enough, Lucian was already dead. So we're able to just throw down our EOR to help people chase. And at this point, the Baron's coming up, right? So shoving this out is nice. Especially if we could possibly get more kills. But the idea being is, like, okay. Somebody gets control of the top lane wave here. Because they're... I don't know why we suddenly don't have vision. <laughs> um, but there, there's a whole bunch of minions here who are going on to our inhibitor. Oh man, we're glitching out. The replay systems can't handle it. It was too much game. Um, but we need to pressure out here as much as possible. Not necessarily to get the turret, but to free up pressure so we can get control of the scuttle crab, get some vision down, and then all in on the Baron. Because we got to continue to make the plays. At this point, we're actually pretty even in the gold. And that actually puts us ahead. So maybe that's an incorrect analysis. Maybe I'm continuing to play behind, as if we're behind. And that's just wrong. Because factually, we aren't behind. So this is, I guess, game sense again. Good pressure on us to get this. This is a little bit of an overcommit. This is me pinging to fall back to Baron. It's good that we were able to press all the way through. Credit to Gnar on that one, because he had the killer split push going on there. And then I am able to throw down this plant so we know that it's not warded. Fight breaks out because somebody goes for a bushwhack. Great call. Now let me punish a face check and that gives us another kill specifically onto their smite. So this should be uncontestable. And pick this up. Again, at this point we're way in the lead. I was playing, I was continuing to play as if we were behind. This is an unfortunate split call for us. I don't remember if Nora actually goes down here. He does. That's really unfortunate. Maybe, I think everyone who backed was probably continuing to play like we were behind, like I was. That's just wrong. Because we weren't behind. You know, we need to play like we're at least even. Sure, they have a bunch of drakes, but these drakes don't do that much for them combat-wise. And we have the gold advantage. We we could tell that we are at least even, roughly speaking. Um, just looking at the objectives that are down on the map, they don't have a whole bunch of ambient gold that like we didn't get. They have like one, two, three, four, five turrets, which does add up, but this is roughly equal at this point in the game. Even if we were behind by this much, it's effectively equal. So this is me, again, sort of being on my own. And trying to use Baron and Banner as best I can to split shove. I'm not sure that this is correct. Once I see that everyone is there, all in on Master E, absolutely correct to continue to shove. Having split here on my own might not have been the right call. And I think I was calling for people to uh, group over onto me so we can make this push happen. But again, it's kind of the wrong call to just sort of do it on my own. And this is a little bit delayed of a recall. I was trying to hold the Baron onto them as long as possible to make them think there was still somebody around there. Ah, oh, that feels painful. Because, like, sure, I got a really sweet crescendo, but that's, that's the same thing we did earlier. So let's watch. We're coming in. We're giving the speed buff forward to everyone again. Thinking, okay, they can they can follow up with us. But look at this positioning, right? Malzahar is going back to base even. I'm not sure if he's about to buy, but he's like walking away from this engagement. Cogma is far enough back to where if I got a crescendo point blank, okay, maybe he can start doing living artillery with his ultimate and like get into position pretty quickly to start having a force. And maybe Nar can jump in. But Nar has no rage built up. He's too far back, especially if I flash. And Malzahar is nowhere near us. And sure, I'm thinking, okay, desperation time. 
This is a bar a bunch of barren up minions, especially this minion. It's gonna be a huge call for help for us. But look how little follow-up the potential there is. There's no way any of this could work. And this is just map awareness, again. Me thinking, okay, me see me see a good crescendo and me take a good crescendo. That's just wrong. I need to wait for my team and go with my team. And like just because I see a three-minute crescendo doesn't mean I should take it. Sure, it feels good, but it doesn't win the game, and that feels much better. And now I'm both without flash and crescendo. I'm sure I've got the cooldown boots, uh, the Ionian boots, but... I'm trying to actually give red over again, but nobody came for it, so I opt not to take it, just in case somebody was going to eventually go take it themselves. Um, there's no real reason to be pressuring the Baron area. We should be getting control over Drake. So I do rotate over there, which is the correct choice. Um, at this point, did I already sell my Sightstone? Yeah. Because I was just floating so much gold, I decided to drop the Sightstone in uh, lieu of a Banshee's Veil to maybe get myself a little bit more damage and make myself a little bit less of an enticing target. So I throw up the Banner of Command on the minion mid and throw down Spooky Ghost to get vision. Seeing them disengaging, I think, okay, well this is the time. We can just go on this Drake really hard. Unfortunately, it's warded to all hell. <laughs> so I'm not only not able to clear all the wards, but they throw one down immediately after. So it's like, all right, well we gotta pick a winning fight then. This time, Nar has his rage building up pretty decently. We are mostly together. Yi's here in the flank, just off screen. So this is a good opportunity to go hard. Especially right now, if there was like a three-man flash crescendo, perfect. Earlier, too much. Giving the auras just to help with poke. Someone on the other team actually aggroed this. Cog uh, opts to continue to do it. Then we wind up... Uh, we wind up disengaging this way. Which gives them a path up this way, right to our middle inhibitor. And this is something that, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but if you follow the pro scene, you've seen stuff like this all the time. Like one, the red side team disengages this way, which opens up a path for blue side team to run it down mid. And this is a map awareness thing. Again, we don't have the best vision, especially since I don't have sight stone anymore. So we should be playing extra defensive. And like, we are slow to rotate. And particularly, like, I am slow to rotate. So I'm trying to help out Cog, trying to get us there. And then I wind up just throwing down everything I have on the engagement that happens. But I'm hanging out way too long here. Again, map awareness. Because while all that's happening, our Nexus dies. So I think this came down to a couple things, right? Came down to map awareness was the big one that we kept having. It also came down to knowing what in the fight we could actually do and what our, I guess, what our role is. That sounds kind of like I'm talking down to Sona. I, I love Sona. <laughs> Never talk down to her. Um, but our role is, again, it's less about sort of establishing and controlling zones on the map um, with vision and with uh, helping out objectives. It's more about helping out team fights because we're all about our auras. We're all about giving people shields. Sure, we can affect the map and control the map if we start to go things like Banner of Command. That's great. But we can't use that item effectively, one, if we don't have the map awareness. That time when I used it on a super minion that was going down a lane that was already pushed to their inner turret, absolute waste that broke my heart. Um, but I think it comes down to that map awareness and the game sense of, okay, my job is to be in these fights. So wherever the fights are about to break out is where I need to be. So my job more than anything else is to track the enemy team where they could be and where they most likely are based on the objectives. Not control the zones, track. Track, track, track. And this is something that we had a lesson on back when we were doing a lot of jungle, was trying to track your enemies. And I, I still think I can use better work on that. And I think that played in a lot to this here, so. Both that and the, that game sense, the map awareness, um, and the tracking of the enemies and sort of knowing our role in the fights. All sort of worked out in our disfavor there and what should have been a one game for us, I think. Uh, at least what could have been a one game for us. 
wound up being a loss. So unfortunate, but definitely a lot to learn from that game. I like games like that where we can actually pull a lot of lessons out and hopefully improve our play quite a bit. Um, I feel like just watching that, I soaked in a lot um, of how I can play Sona a bit more effectively. And if we are going to be doing that mid-support as our uh, next few episodes of queuing up, we'll probably be picking a lot of Sona up. So hopefully that will make my play with Sona a little bit better. If you know somebody uh, who goes a little bit too hard with those Flash Crescendo plays, maybe this will be helpful to send to them. Or, you know, if this helped you, Good. I'm glad. <laughs> Hopefully this helps you. Um, if you know somebody who can help, send it their way. Otherwise, thanks for watching. appreciate you guys hanging out. And I will see you guys in the next episode.